Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of the Boyfriend Proof Podcast. This is your host, Monica Asmi. I want to start out by saying I'm so thankful for all of the support I've received starting this podcast. So many of you have reached out to share your stories, advice, and so much more. And I'm so honored to have a platform for all of you guys to do so. I have a great lineup of guests who are ready to share their hashtag boyfriend proof story on this podcast. And before we introduce our guest for today, don't forget to follow boyfriend proof podcast on Instagram. And if you want to be a guest on the next episode and you have a relationship story that you want to share, please send me a DM. Or of course, if you want to stay anonymous, you can send me an email of your story to read on the show. My email is boyfriendproofpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to have you guys on my show. So today on the podcast, we have a very special guest. Her name is Jessica. She's one of my besties. We've been friends for almost two years. And during my television production days, I was the associate producer to her producer magic. She's a TV queen, writes newscasts for a living. And let me tell you, that ain't easy work. Hi, Jessica. (laughs) Hi, Monica. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me on. Congrats on the new podcast. I'm very excited. Um, As Monica was saying, we worked together for like a little over a year so it's just great seeing um how far you've come and we also like whenever we'd go out to have lunch she would be telling me about like her boyfriend proof idea so it's it's awesome to just to see it coming together yes thank you so much for being on the show I literally I, you're one of the people that supported me like even before it was a podcast so I'm so grateful for you being such a great friend and being on here to spill the tea. You're such a great friend. And ironically, this was not planned. I am literally drinking tea right now. <laughs> yes, because it's a little cold this morning <laughs> or yeah. afternoon. I don't even know what day it is or what's going on, but you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think last year we were um, going a little wacky and a little crazy. We would... <laughs> Um, We would work until like, what, midnight, 1 a.m.? I don't even remember anymore. There were a lot of um, late shifts. (laughs) We would work forever and like these people would abuse us. We're just not going to talk about who, but like people would abuse us. Monica's work ethic is like, it's out of this world. Like this girl, like honestly, my respect, like sometimes she would be the only associate producer in the newsroom. So basically how just quick recap how it works. Each producer is assigned a newscast. So I would frequently produce like the 11 o'clock, six or 6.30 newscast. And associate producers help out with those shows with writing and making sure that all the graphics are okay, like stuff like that. Sometimes Monica would be the only person in the newsroom helping like four or five producers at a time. Even last years like Thanksgiving day was out of control having to write for two shows just by herself so yeah I I don't know how you did it (laughs) dude I don't know either but like I know because like you're the actual producer and like people would like anytime there was breaking news they would literally like be on you like literally literally they were like on Jessica while she's trying to type like one word and they can't even let her type anything and I was just like dude I am so happy I'm not in her chair right now. I'm like, I would always look at her and she's like so calm and collected. And then when we go to lunch, she'll be like, oh my God. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There were some times where I cried in my car just from the stress. So yeah, we would go out and get some whiskey sometimes after work. (laughs) Or in and out burgers and burritos. (laughs) Yes, oh my God, I miss our lunch dates. Yeah, that was fun. And that's actually during one of those lunch dates that's when Monica was telling me about um boyfriend proof yes and at the time we were both dealing with some stupid guys at the time and we're going through some intense emotions (laughs) like some intense emotions and I know Jessica is here to spill the tea on one of those stupid guys that we would drink about I guess (laughs) so Jessica tell us 
who is this mystery man and why did he break your heart? <laughs> this mystery man, <laughs> first thing before we, you know, spill the tea, get into the story. There's two people involved in this story. Ooh, that's why people, it's juicy. <laughs> if those two people by any chance are listening to this, know that I'm, I'm telling the story like, yeah, you know, I think it's actually kind of funny how everything unfolded now and more of a Like, what can we learn from this? Like life lessons, what like other listeners can take away from this. So, you know, I'm going to tell it with respect. And um, of course, because we're classy like that. We are classy (laughs) bitches. Can I say bitches? (laughs) Yes, you can swear on here. (laughs) All righty. So uh, one of the times when I went out to lunch with Monica, I was not having a great day because of a boy. And um, then I just spilled the tea. I'm like, Monica, like, this is killing me. She legit full on was like laying it. It was over pizza. We were having this huge pizza. It was so good. And I was living my, I wasn't really living my best life, but like, I was like trying to, but like. (laughs) At the moment. At the moment, the pizza, yeah, the pizza was so great. And she's like, Monica, let me tell you something. It's like, I need you to like, keep this like a secret because like, literally like, I know you're hella quiet, but like, <laughs> let me just tell you. <laughs> and she has for two years. I know. Um, okay. So the boy was someone we worked with, <laughs> you know, everybody says like, it's not a good idea to like date in the workplace, yada, yada, which I, you know, I know, but I was, I was 23 I'm 25 now. I mean, it's only been two years, but it was like, I want to do it. <laughs> first mistake. You know, first impression. I thought he was a nice guy. Hmm. He gives off the vibe that he's very nice and he will do anything for anybody in the workplace. Like he would always be like, hey, let me get you coffee. Let me get you food. Let me do this for you. Let me do that for you. Hey, I did this for you. I did that for you. And it's like, he just gave off the vibes that like, he was so nice and caring and like important, I guess. So like, I totally understand why, you know, what happened basically. Yeah. And at the time I was like, okay, this is, you know, post-college life. Like he seems like a nice guy. He's I don't want to say like I have a type like I just I want to get to know people I just got like good vibes from him initially Mm -hmm. um so I was like okay like I could I don't know he's cute like I could maybe see something and maybe it was me I don't know this is just my impression um he you know would come by my desk and he does sometimes he sometimes does like this weird like I don't know how to explain like a weird eye flirty thing Oh, the eyes. He seduces you with those eyes. He he does. Like, I don't know. I know exactly what you're talking about. If anyone here listening is a Vampire Diaries fan. Oh my God. You know the Damon eye flirty thing that he does? That's what this guy at my office does. I don't know if he does it intentionally. I don't know. I was seduced by the eyes. This was in within a month. This was like really fast. It Um, was. Then we went to this going away like bar crawl there I started to talk to him a little bit more um you know got to know him a little bit more and then on another instance I had um gone out with some friends and um we were going to come back and have a like a poker night like game night and I wasn't invited by the way (laughs) Monica (laughs) I'm sorry Monica I'd like to apologize in front of everyone (laughs) So I left with my cousin in one um, Uber and then my friends had left in another Uber. As soon as we leave, I get a message from this boy. Then I was like, oh, you know, we're going to have like a get together. Like, um, he's like, what are you doing? You know, those. You up. <laughs> you up. Um, so then I was like, oh, we're going to have a quick like game night. Like uh, I'm heading back to the house right now. If like, you know, if you want to sing by, I was just trying to be friendly. Like at this point, like I was like, okay, like, I don't know if he's, into me I don't know if like I'm really like I don't know what's happening like or I don't know if it's just me but whatever like I'm still down to like you know get to know him even be friends like I don't like it'd be cool like if we did go on a date but if not like it's fine so then we get back to the house like half an hour goes by the, like my friends were like oh we're gonna they, they made a stop to eat the boys like I'm gonna head over okay <laughs> then my friends are like you know what we're gonna call it a night I mean it was like two in the morning yeah so then I'm like okay like it's fine so then boy gets here I'm like hey I'm sorry like I mean 
we can play Uno. I don't know. <laughs> like, like three people, like a three person game. Like, I don't yeah. know. You know, they bailed. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> And then he's like, oh, no, it's fine. So then we were just, we're drinking. You know, at this point, I'm like 23. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done with the whole, will they, won't they? Like, I don't know, like, if this person's into me or not. Mm -hmm. Like, just like uh, dating in general. I was like, okay, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to, like, just straight up be like, hey, um, I like you. And then just put it out there. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, no, like no harm. Like everything's fine. Like we'll just be friends. You know, it's scary. Like, but I'm like, no, I'm done with the whole like, you know, games like from like high school and just like, I don't know. Like, I'm just kind of like, I'm going to go after, you know, what I want, like in life in general. Yeah. So basically I like you. Mm -hmm. uh, I freaks out, like you feel uncomfortable. I'm like, oh no, like, I'm just like letting you know, but like, I mean, if you don't like me back, like, that's fine. Like, everything's fine, dude. Like, we'll just be friends. Like, it's cool. But yeah. he wouldn't listen. We just had, like, a whole freak out. Like, it was just kind of like, whoa, someone got triggered. Like, this got blown out of proportion. Whoa. Gets all dramatic. I'm going to, I can't do this. I'm uncomfortable. I'm going to go. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fine. So he left. But then I just ended up feeling bad because that's, like, that wasn't my intention at all for this to be all dramatic. Get blown Did you feel like hella embarrassed at that moment? I felt more, not even embarrassed. I just felt like I'd done something wrong. Like yeah. I, it was never my intention to make him feel uncomfortable or like, you know, like I was saying like, dude, like it's fine if you don't like me back. We'll just like pretend nothing happened. Like we're, we're friends. Like we'll, or we'll just have like a good working relationship. Like it's fine. Yeah. Um, so I just felt bad because he felt uncomfortable and like left like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So then fast forward, we had another bar crawl for like another coworker that was going to leave. Everyone was leaving the company basically. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, there was a lot of high turnover. We go out and then he has like a, um, he was going to have like an after party thing. So then I'm, me and my cousin were walking with um, this like couple that had gone to the to the crawl so then we had parked near each other so we were walking and then um you know I say bye whatever about to like go home and then I get a text from this boy saying hey I'm having a bar crawl come through that first bar crawl boy had gotten me a shot you know mm -hmm. and then you know we live in not a city city but like a big town <laughs> yeah you could say that <laughs> um so shots aren't cheap you know it's so like I'm like oh um let me so he was ordering a drink and then um when I went up to the bar at this at this new crawl and then I was like oh um I got it like it's fine and then he's like makes it all weird he's like why I'm like um because you you got the the shot last time so I'm just getting you back you know and but it it was like really awkward and I'm like why do you have to make things awkward and weird no I feel awkward in here <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyways fast forward get text from him hey we're having a after party at my place after the second crawl okay so then I'm like I shouldn't go you know those those times where you're like I shouldn't but then you do and then you're like dang it and then Jessica's like coming to my desk like should I go should I go should I not go should I go should I go I'm like just go <laughs> like holy cow like dude <laughs> just go have fun so then I went I was like okay like it's fine like I just wanted to clear the air like we're just gonna be like co-workers friends like it's fine so then it's six in the morning <laughs> all of a sudden everyone had passed out it was just me and him like the sun was about to come up and keep in mind I had to go work at 9 30 mm -hmm. 6 a.m have to go to work at 9 30 I've had like some champagne and like a margarita like girl <laughs> um you live and learn right um yep. so then uh he's gonna show me to the grass room and then basically uh boy kissed me whatever then I'm like all confused like oh okay so like what's happening then because you had a freak out when I told you I liked you but then I didn't initiate the kiss he did so like okay like like, I'm confused. Make it make sense. Yes. Mixed messages all over the place. And then um, I make it to work somehow on time. <laughs> <laughs> literally, that's like your superpower. Like, literally, I got so drunk the night before and I'm somehow at work at 9 a.m. in the morning making a newscast. You know, typical me. It was at that point. I'm honestly, I feel like 
I don't know if it's other people, other people have gone through this too, but me personally, like, I feel like my body changed so much from mm -hmm. within the last two years. Like I wouldn't, I have to be in bed right now by 11, 1130. Otherwise, like I can't get up early. You um, old woman. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I wouldn't be able to think I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to do that now. So then he texts me, did he go to, did he get to work fine? What, you know? And I'm like, then I was like, um, oh, he is a nice guy. <laughs> oh my God. So then he ends up coming over to my house one more time. And then we end up hanging out, hanging out at that point. I was like, okay, well, let me just like, cause I'm getting mixed messages. What is going on? Let me do some digging. So then, um, <laughs> she uses me to do some digging. Just kidding. <laughs> But then we had a, we had an entanglement. Oh <laughs> my God. Data pink myth would say. Of course. Um, at this point I'm like, oh, I wonder if like, you know, are we, are we going to be like, have a friends with benefits situation? Like, does he like me? Does he not like me? You know, the, all yeah. the questions, non-ending questions and getting no answers, which I know a lot of women go through. It's so frustrating. Like, I hate how they're like, there's this in society, there's this idea that women are complicated, you know, supposedly men are simple. Mm -mm. Nope, lies. Because <laughs> here I am trying to be straightforward with a, this guy and I'm getting just mixed messages, no clear answers. My intention wasn't to force anything, dude, if we don't date, that's fine. But like, you need to be clear with me. What is this? That's one of my, my biggest pet peeves. I don't like wasting people's time and I don't like people wasting my time. Basically that happened. But then at the same time, he was friends. It seemed like he was friends with this other female coworker. Then Monica was like, okay, I'm noticing something like weird. Like what is happening? Um, she said, I think that female coworker is going around telling people about your entanglement. Um, <laughs> Oh my goodness. And then I'm like, whatever I do, whether it's right or wrong, who cares? It's my life, my personal life. It doesn't concern anyone at work. That's why I had a talk with that female coworker. Hey, I don't know, like if he told you anything, whatever, you know, this is still the workplace. Like that's just, let's just, you know, keep things under wraps. Like I'm not yeah. even at that point I was done with him. I'm like, I'm not even talking to him anymore. And it seemed like she was very understanding, but then two weeks pass homegirl is over here crying her eyes <laughs> out and then that's when me and monica started getting suspicious we're like oh my god what if they had something going me and monica were like detectives <laughs> literally but it's not even like i was or we were like actually digging for information that information was just out in the open and it's like we're able to understand and put two and two together and it's like yeah. okay why are you people thinking I'm stupid like okay like I was a stupid college kid like I was like 22 yeah. at the time people thought I was like some child and I was like you know what I might be a child because everyone <laughs> everyone <laughs> thought I was dumb everyone thought I was so stupid and I was well, just like the thing, I don't know if it because at work you were quiet or like you kept to yourself. I think it was just because you were, you didn't want to deal with like anyone, yeah. but everyone, we would all just come to Monica with our secrets, with our, like, <laughs> you know, Monica was getting all the tea. That female coworker though, she talks a lot. So like Monica says, we weren't even digging. She was just straight up, like telling everything to Monica. Yeah. So then and not even in a secret way. It was just more like, literally, I'm going to scream to you all this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, like the whole, like everyone knows, like, it wasn't like I knew this like secret thing, like literally everyone knew. So I'm basically put two and two together. So there I was homeboy goes on <laughs> vacation for like two weeks during that time span. That female coworker is crying her eyes out telling Monica, well, why doesn't he text me back? Why isn't he text? So obviously that just confirmed all our suspicions. And then while she was over there crying, all depressed, I was, I was, I was spewing. I was furious. I felt stupid. Mm -hmm. I think um, <laughs> what, what got to me the most was just that I felt used. I felt lied to. Ego was so bruised. Like yeah. you were never clear with me and keep in mind this was just a month I would never let this go on longer um yeah I was cleared with you you had a freak out you never were clear with me 
and drag me apparently into something because I I think they were basically like on the brink of dating. Basically, this guy has commitment issues. Nothing, no lines are drawn. Nothing is clear. So I was just furious that he wasted my time, dragged me into this mess, almost made me look back bad in front of the whole newsroom, even though I know that I felt, I feel like we were both to blame him because he dragged me into it and was really like public. So like, I feel like basically I was on the brink of everyone knowing because I, I know I also put myself in that situation, but it's also his fault. I was just furious and then crying because my ego was bruised. And, you know, also because, you know, I'm a person, I felt used. Yeah. yeah. Especially because I'd been so willing to open to talking, like, just let me know what's going on. And he never did. So that's when um, um, Monica was also going through boy travel. So we were both all crying and keep in mind when I was at the station, though, when I was at work, I kept face. No, no one is gonna know like I am here to yeah. my job. keep it professional keep it cute um yep classy af <laughs> if I'm gonna cry I'm gonna do it in the comfort of my home or <laughs> in Monica's car when we would go to <laughs> Starbucks <laughs> yes um, so then he got back so that's also what another thing that I was like just a nerve like really just selfish the audacity just left had his had his fun left came back like it was nothing like he hadn't done nothing wrong except Mm -hmm. lead on these two girls and Mm -hmm. you know hurt them like in the process yeah this isn't college anymore which by the way like college like f boys shouldn't be doing that either but i'm like dude you're freaking 25 like it's (laughs) it's a time where you you got to start like not even being a grown-up but like being a decent person like who does yeah like if no. you're gonna be a fuck boy, then then go sleep around, but be like upfront about it. Like, why are you leading on people? Why are you lying to people? Exactly like, for your own selfish gain. That's so from a moral standpoint, and just from like like as a human, that's so like it's so upsetting. So, anyways, time goes by. I um, he comes back like it's nothing. I'm keeping it cute, professional, but I'm being a little passive aggressive, like letting you know I know what you did. Mm-hmm. Monica knows what you did <laughs> just giving him that vibes like yeah I would drop hints, hints here and they're like don't mess with me I know what you did mm-hmm. months after all that went down my shift changed my schedule changed so I would work with them on the weekends my shift changed so I was Monday through Friday I didn't really have to interact with those two people the female co-worker and yeah. the guy I would I didn't really have to interact with them so that gave me time to like look in okay what was going on inside like with me, you know, I was just, you know, going through quarter life crisis. What do I want to do with my life? Mm-hmm. You know, and this is post college. This is my first big job after college. So I kind of feel like I went back, feel like I'm in like young again, like in college, like I don't want to deal with the fact that I, that I am growing up and having to make all these big life decisions. I don't, I don't, I want to put it off. I don't want to deal with it. So then that was going on with me. So that's why I, put myself in that position. And what's frustrating is I feel like I owned up to my part. You know, I was honest with myself. Yeah. And then later on, um, I spoke with that female female coworker, but I feel like not that I need an apology, but just kind of like was, it was an acknowledge that like what happened was, you know, messed up. Anyways, after, so I didn't have to interact with them for a while. Then my, my schedule changed yet again, as Monica knows all the time. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm back on the weekend schedule and have to interact with not just one, both of them. Both of them. Yep. Um, and and, was- she, and she had to watch them get all cozy together, sitting next to each other. So and laughing in front of everyone. That's where I was like, okay, so I got dragged into what I, I don't, I was like, I don't know if they're a relationship. I don't know what is going on between them. I'm like, okay, so I got lied to by the guy, got dragged into whatever situation they had going on unknowingly. And I owned up to my part, but they're just acting like nothing happened. Like everything's fine. So that's why I got mad. I was more like disappointed and frustrated with mm. the female coworker because I'm like, girl, like you, like it's right in front of your face. Don't you see how, like, how we got played, like both of us and yeah. you're still going back to him. Like just 
like you know just as a like woman to woman like I'm like like girl self-respect like don't why are you letting this guy treat you like that like that's not yeah and it's not me blaming her at all like it's like I completely blame him you know for the most part I know we each played a part but mostly him because he was the one that lied to both of us and then also him because he's just like carrying on like nothing happened like I can deceive I I can do whatever I want like who are you Mm -hmm. Um, and like Monica was saying they were they would sit next to each other laughing giggling like flirting in front of me so I was already healing with like what had happened and then having to interact with that every weekend like I had like anxiety I just kind of like not being able to like move past it because every single weekend it was not a good situation it was always a reminder like Mm -hmm. you know like yeah like life with a bad haircut and never getting rid of it so then eventually I left the company later in spring and then that's when the female coworker reached out to me. And because that towards the end, right before I left, um, I was like, okay, here's what I can control. This is what I can do. I can either keep allowing them to have that power of making me feel uncomfortable, me like not, in, you know, not enjoying my work, not enjoying being here and just dealing with all of that, or I can just let it go for once and for all, mm-hmm. um, acknowledge like he never cared about me. He doesn't care about me and just be, you know, civil for my sake. I'm going to, I'm going to control what I can for me. Right. Um. So then that's when eventually I was, a, and I forgave both of them for my sake. You know how they say like, cause you're a classy bitch. <laughs> that's when I made my peace with everything that had happened what can I learn from this and let it go yeah for myself so then towards the end um I had a civil working relationship with both of them with her I feel me and her got put in a tough spot with the work wise so me and that coworker uh were basically doing like four people's jobs yeah so I'm like okay so she depends on me and I depend on her to get this done. Towards the end, uh, dare I say, we we're almost kind of kind of friends. Not friends, friends, but... I just think you had to, like, you really were forced yeah. to be civil with her. I feel like there was a mutual respect there towards the mm-hmm. end. Like, yeah. and um, a good work- working relationship. So, uh, borderline friends. So then um, I, I left the company and then she reaches out, like, three days four days later. This is, this was back in May. So by this time pandemic had hit, everyone was working at home. So I hadn't seen her in a while. And, um, so I, I didn't really get to say a proper goodbye to all my coworkers. So, um, she reaches out, Hey, I didn't know you were like, this was going to happen. Like, I just found out like, you know, you're, you're gone. Like you left. And I was like, yeah. Um, which I was like, why, why is she calling me like this weird? She was saying, no, well, yeah, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. It was good working with you, whatever. (laughs) And then it, starts going into that territory like oh and like she's like Jessica you're so strong I don't know how you were able to get through the whole like you know summer fiasco so she kept hinting at it yeah then I straight up told her okay I moved past it I would rather not talk about it but you keep hinting at it so here's the thing I'm willing to because I'm not gonna lie I've always been curious about your side of the story I told her Mm -hmm. so we can talk about it but not just like oh because I want the tea we're going to talk about it to clear the air yeah and only one time I after this time I never want to talk about it until now um (laughs) but um but like I was telling Monica before we started we started the podcast I was telling her I'm just sharing more of like what can people learn from it because I know that a lot of girls have been put in this situation too Mm -hmm. so then me and that coworker, we um she told me what happened on her side I told her how it happened on my side and as we knew you know boy is a scumbag (laughs) basically he was leading her on to that they're basically in a not never like official relationship but basically you know and promising her the world and the stars meanwhile he was leading kind of like leading me on and I don't know I don't even know what we had I don't even know what that was so both things were happening at the same time so then she told me you know how everything happened on her side I got to 
because I've always found human psychology like just very interesting. Mm-hmm. What drives people to do certain things? Why people make the choices that they make? Um, so I was able to see kind of like why, where she was coming from and why she still went back to him even after the cat was out of the bag. Yeah, so I think it was like a good conclusion. And I hope she's doing well. I mean, I <laughs> I told Monica that the other day um, I was walking around with friends and I never thought I was going to see her again. Yeah. And there she was. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into her on the street while we were walking. And, you know, we were about to cross paths. So it's not even like, I can't even be like, oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hell awkward. Oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, well then I'm like, hi. And she's like, I could totally tell that she was like, whoa, like she was like, also never expecting to see me again. And she was even like kept sit, like telling me and my friends about like this date that she had gone on. I don't know if she was also doing it to like hint like, hey, I'm not with that guy anymore. <laughs> yeah I'm like girl if you are if you aren't you know learned your lesson or if you didn't that's all you boo like yeah I, I'm not I'm way past this so yeah and then the guy um even after everything was out in the open never reached out never apologized mm-hmm. never nothing was said but I don't think anything needed to be said I just hope that he owns up to what he did or just acknowledges it and is making better choices <laughs> and treating women yes. with respect. Well, one can only hope, but yeah, we were um, talking earlier about how, you know, a lot of us, like, even if you're not in an actual relationship and you're talking to, to someone that you don't really know for a short period of time too, like, we were talking about how like we romanticize the idea of that person in our heads. So I feel like that happened to both of you too. Like you both, like you both felt like this guy was something and someone because of what he gave out. Yeah, exactly. And then this kind of like goes into, you know, I was telling you like, I don't know if I just like overanalyzing or just curiosity. Like I just, but I did kind of like sit with myself and then figure out why I made the the choices that I made. And then also kind of like why I think, I mean, I'm never really going to know why I think that they made the choices that they made. So Mm -hmm. with her, she had just gotten out of a relationship Mm -hmm. and um, she thought she was going to marry the guy, whatever, heartbroken. And then this guy swoops in. This kind of goes, what I'm going to say, I think ties into like this, like post that I saw the other day no matter it, you know, you can be like a good person, whatever, but you're, you're going to be a villain at one point in someone's <laughs> life story. Yeah. He was the one in mine. <laughs> <laughs> in my story, he was the wolf uh, in sheep's clothing, you know, like he presents himself like it's, he's a nice guy. Maybe he is, maybe he was just dealing with issues and that's why he did what he did. I don't know. Communication is not his forte. So yeah, so I guess she was, I don't know if he was a rebound. I don't know if she was just seeking comfort, you know, and feeling that like, you know, like validation, this guy, you know, left her. So now maybe this guy is going to see the worth in her and, you know, me and her talked and, you know, continuous work on like self-esteem. And, you know, I think we should all do that, but yeah, she's, I, it seems like she's doing good now. So I'm, I'm glad for her. Um, him, I, all I know is that he, I think he was cheated on in the past. I mean, obvious just from like behavior. I don't think he did the work to yeah. heal from that. Yeah, I he was just that. giving off that like, you know, he didn't know what he wanted and he didn't really want to hurt anyone, but you know, he did. I I don't think he's a bad person. Like at yeah. his core, he has a lot of like stuff that he was you know, going through and wasn't putting in the work. And I don't think he saw it like intentionally like, oh, I'm going to hurt these two girls, you know? Yeah. I think it was just a lot of unresolved, like hurt and trauma there. And then with me, that goes into what Monica was saying earlier. I was telling her that people who are listening um, have seen the movie 500 Days of Summer. So I feel like I'm like the guy in that movie where I'm like, I get carried away, you know, everybody at the end of the day, like, obviously it's not your your whole life, but you do want to eventually one day, like meet someone, share your life, you know? Yeah. So I 
start romanticizing, the signs were right in front of me. I just got caught up, caught up in my daydreams and my like story that I had made up in my head. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, like what if start dating? And then we end up being like this cute, like news couple, like <laughs> no. So so Monica, I think that I mean, that's happened to me. I mean, happened to me in this, you know, story. So I, that's something that I'm definitely working on. I'm like, you know, let, let go of like the fairy tale, like lens, like see, you know, just get to know people and see them for like who they are and like what they tell you, yeah. you know, instead of just trying to hear what I want to, what I want to hear. So yeah, just letting go of the rose colored glasses. <laughs> I love how classy you are because like even though you knew and everyone knew that there was like another person involved, especially another person that you knew and then who knows, like there could have been like other people in there at the same time too. (laughs) You never like, you were never that girl that was like, I'm going to show him I'm going to be better than this person. I'm like, yeah, you were hurt, but like you were, you're so classy about it. And like, just me, like watching everything happen. I was just like, dude, you knowing that there's like somebody else fighting for his attention, I guess is what you could say, or spending time with him. You were like, you know what? Like, let her have him. I don't care. Like, I know my worth. I don't care if he wants to be with me, then he can be with me, but whatever. Like, I'm not going to like fight for this person's attention when they're like nothing. Yeah. Like, I mean, first of all, he's not the only guy on the planet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, But one of the biggest things I've learned you know, just like in the past since then is people are going to treat you by what you allow and what you permit. So if I had, you know, try to fight her for his attention, whatever. So it's kind of like saying, Hey, you lied me. You deceived me. You think that you can just use me like just for entertainment or whenever is convenient for you. Yeah. Okay. And it's not. So I think, yeah, just not allowing that people to treat you like that and that kind of behavior and also, you know what you're, what you deserve, you know what you're worth. I just, you know, I hope he learns from it. Yes. I did. <laughs> I'm glad. And I'm glad that you like took the time to like heal from it and like understand what happened. And you're able, do you think you're able to like really move past it like fully and move on now? Or is yeah, this absolutely. way past it? Woohoo! That's what we like to hear. <laughs> but now, like I look back at it, I just, it makes me laugh. It's funny. It is funny. It's, it's kind of a, it's a funny story. It is. It is. <laughs> Literally, I, yeah, it's pretty funny, but um, not at the moment. It wasn't funny because we cried <laughs> in the bathroom. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of crying. I mean, it's not just like, you know, just all of a sudden, oh no, like F him. I yeah. know that I'm worth and blah, blah. Like it took time to to really allow myself to feel everything I needed to feel and to put in the work and just come out like a healthier person you know yeah and it's definitely Uh, easier not to actually be working with him right now either so so you don't see him I never want to see him again (laughs) damn (laughs) dude I yeah yeah, honestly Monica told me so many times that she didn't like him (laughs) Dude, I don't know. There was like something about him that look was just like, I don't know, like the new. <laughs> like knowing what you told me and like the way like I hate people. Oh my god. I hate people that come off as so sweet and so nice and I'm perfect type of vibes. And secretly behind closed doors, you're just trash. And I just oh that pisses me off more than anything. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, it was just it almost reminds me of another reference of, of that movie Closer. So it's like these two couples and then Why they- haven't I watched any of these movies that you're mentioning? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll start a movie podcast. <laughs> But yeah, it's like two couples and then they were cheating amongst each other. And then the partners, you know, found out and so blah, blah, blah. Like it, it kind of reminds me of that. But then also like, you know, I'm not gonna also be like, oh, I was like all innocent in this. Cause like without my knowledge, I was the villain in their story. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it is what it is. Any ending thoughts or remarks or advice you want to leave off as we end here? 
kind of just what I, circling back to what I was saying earlier, just be yourself. I know that sounds very cliche, but you know, if you're trying to, you know, date this guy and you're like, oh no, well, my hair has to look perfect. My makeup has to look perfect. Oh, um, I like, <laughs> like, for example, like this golf or whatever it's called. Um, he doesn't like it. So I mean, I'm going to hide that from him because he's going to think I'm lame. Like, no girl, no, no. Be who you are, be unapologetically you and the right person will appreciate every part of you. Preach. Um, within you, without you having to change. Like, and also don't just talk, listen. Like they will tell you who they are. They will like, you're, you know, what you see is, you, is what you get. So don't romanticize girl. Like just <laughs> live the real experience. I love it. I love it so much. That's so true. I literally, it's just, wow, that was just so beautiful, Jessica. That was so beautiful. Oh, bitch, thank you. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that you came on the podcast. Me too. Thanks again for having me. And I'm very excited um, for all the future episodes and just like, you know, where it goes. Like, I really, um, I'm very excited. Yes. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I have so many awesome guests coming up to share their hashtag boyfriend proof story. So of course, stay tuned for that. And once again, if you or someone you know would like to be on the show to share your story, shoot me a DM on my Instagram at boyfriend proof podcast. And we'll be back soon for yet another boyfriend proof story. Goodbye. That was so dramatic. (laughs) Oh my God, that was so good. I love it.